the youngest entrepreneur in the history of Austin, Texas, and her name is Michaela Almer, and she is the CEO and founder of Me and the Bees Lemonade and the Healthy High Foundation. She recently appeared on two panels for South by Southwest. The last panel was with Mark Miller, who's the co-author of Legacy in the Making, Building a Long-Term Brand to Stand Out in a Short-Term World, and Michaela was featured with Mark in a panel entitled B sweet to C sweet, the making of me and the bees, and she was also featured in the book. So, Michaela, welcome to Economic Perspectives. Thank you, glad to be here. And since you're the tender age of 14, I thought I'd bring in one of the local KAZI celebrate, cele celebrities. Mm -hmm. I have to slow down here. She is the host and founder of Teens Choice Bookshelf, which comes on the first. Saturday of every month at 2.15 p.m. here on KZI. It's part of the Below Zero schedule program, and she's the co-host also with Alex and Alexis Winston. So, Maya, welcome back to Economic Perspectives. Hello. And so I'm going to let you do the honors of introducing Michaela Ulmer. Okay, so um, Michaela Ulmer is the CEO and founder of Me and the Bees Lemonade. The business idea came to her when she was four and a half years old with the aspiration to save the bees. Now her business has skyrocketed, has skyrocketed and is available in 40 states. But not only has Michaela started a lemonade company, but she is also an activist, author, philanthropist, and bee ambassador while still in school. And I did admit Michaela at the very beginning, I want you to inspire Maya so she can become successful and wealthy like you will be and take care of her parents like I'm sure you're going to take care of your parents. Of so, so is that why you started the business? Yes. Yeah, so, well, <laughs> no, that's one of the goals I have in the future when I get big enough. But um, initially I started my company to help save the bees. So what ended up happening is I got stuck by two bees in one week. And I was terrified of them, so my parents encouraged me to do some research on them. And doing that research, I found out that they're incredibly important pollinators. I'm not sure if you knew this, but they pollinate one out of every three bites of the food we eat. So um, I was astounded by this as a four and a half year old, and then I realized that they were dying at an alarming rate. So I ended up creating this lemonade stand. Um, and participating in local fairs here in Austin, and I would donate about 10% of my proceeds to organizations that were helping save the bees. So that was my initial goal, and even today, we're still sticking to that mission. So you're 14, and you've been in business about 10 years now. Yes, so it's our 10-year anniversary. Um, I'm planning so many things this year. I'm going to Budapest and Singapore to uh, teach girls and other entrepreneurs about being a social entrepreneur and also about the bees and my company and story. Um, we're going into even more stores. We just rolled out into a uh, fresh market, a world market, and rolling out to more stores of the base of the stores that we're already in, like Whole Foods and Natural Grocers. Um, I'm also in UT and uh, Fairmont Hotel here in Austin, since you guys are uh, based here. Um, but I am also writing a book called uh, Be the Change and um, Dream Like a Kid, Be Fearless. And I'm excited for that to come out. And I'm also um, hoping to do more with my nonprofit, the Healthy High Foundation. So um, I'm really excited about that. So how did you juggle between school and your business? Um, well, it's a challenge. Uh, as a 14 year old, obviously I have to go to school. My parents definitely won't homeschool me. So. Uh, right now I go to St. Stephen's, but I do have a lot of homework. I have like around three hours or so each night. So um, I do my best. It's spring break for me right now, so I'm glad I can um, speak here. So I will work on my company when I'm on break, on the weekends, um, sometimes after school if there's nights where I don't have as much homework. Um, but it can be hard balancing my company and being a 14 year old girl as well. So what other challenges have you faced besides having to change the lemonade name? Yeah, so I'm not sure if you knew this, but when I went on Shark Tank, my name is Bee Sweet. Um, now my name is Me and the Bees Lemonade. And, um, and so that was 
yes, a big challenge. Another challenge is balancing. Another challenge that I had was when I got sent by two bees in one week when I was four and a half years old. Um, but as an entrepreneur, there's going to be a lot of challenges. And I guess you kind of have to face that. You have to go into starting this company, whatever you're doing, realizing, okay, there's going to be challenges. I need to make sure that I have my people and I guess a hive, uh, which is you guys are included in that hive to help me um, as I go through these challenges. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Economic Perspectives on KAZI 88.7 FM. I'm Hopeton Hay. My guest is Michaela Almer. She is the founder and CEO of Be Sweet Lemonade. And we're joined in the studio by Maya Hay. She is the host of Teen's Choice Book Show. Did someone else put their arms out here? Do I have to introduce the parents too? No, no. <laughs> mom, mom is here too, and mom is also a marketing guru and an entrepreneur. Yes. So, this, so how much of your uh, savviness from marketing do you think you got from your mother? Oh, probably all of it. She actually was a marketing entrepreneur before she started working for my company, and that's kind of what she brought to the table. She teaches me about PR. She teaches me about social media. Anytime I have a presentation, she helped me study for that. Like even up until. 11 p.m. the night before, 6.30 a.m. the morning of. So you're pretty now pretty experienced in appearing on television, on radio, uh, you do a lot of media. So let's talk a little bit about your experience with Shark Tank. And what year was that you were on Shark Tank? And how was that experience? Was that your first major TV appearance? Um, I believe it was, it was when I went on when I was nine, it aired when I was 10. Um, and now I'm 14, so you can do the math. I'm not really sure the year. Um, but it was my first, I believe, national TV experience. So I'd been on local Austin TV before then and radio stations. But Shark Tank was my first time appearing to a national audience. And it was huge for the company. Um, website blew up. Social media blew up. Um, and so it was a lot to take in. But that was kind of... Uh, people who didn't live in Austin, that was their first look at the brand. So we built upon that. Since then, we've been on Good Morning America, um, Shark Tank, The Today Show, and even more. So it was my first It was my first experience. It was fun, amazing, and um, being on these TV shows and radio shows has been very helpful for advertising the brand as well. So that's helped you to take the brand from maybe being a local or regional yes. mm -hmm. uh, outlets into becoming a national brand? Exactly, you have to start small. That's why we started here in Austin. Amazing support of local companies. But when you start off, you can't just go to national TV. You can't go to national press. You have to start off, find your people, find, uh, make sure that you have people purchasing whatever product you have in Austin or where you're from. And then once you have that, you can go national because that's how you people can spread the buzz. So how did kids at school, how did kids at school respond when they found out that you had your own business? Did they treat you differently? No. So I personally, I like to keep them separate, but you're not like they're always gonna find out, and uh, it hasn't changed anything. I mean, I won't get people coming up to me saying, "Oh, I bought your lemonade at Whole Foods. It was so good," or um, I'll have people asking me questions about a company they're hoping to start um, or a fair they're hoping to do so I'm always there to help um, but personally I it doesn't really come it doesn't interfere I'm still a normal 14 year old so so what advice do you have for kids who are aspiring to start their own business or become an entrepreneur I would say that this is the time to do it and the reason why is because I always say to dream like a kid the reason why is because when kids want something they do whatever needs to be done in order to get it and so like if they want ice cream they're thinking I want this ice cream I'm gonna get this ice cream whereas parents may think I want this ice cream but I'm gonna have to count the calories and the taxes and um, the gas fare to get there and so if you have a business idea I mean trial and error start it now I had plenty of companies and things that I was selling in front of my house before I started me the bees but um, now is the time to start I think and this is a great place to do it if you're just joining us you're listening to economic perspectives on KAZI 88.7 FM I'm Hopeton Hay my guest is Michaela Almer she is a local entrepreneur, the founder and the owner of Me and the Bees Lemonade and the Healthy Hive Foundation. 
And we also have with us in the studio, Maya Hayes. She is the host of Teen's Choice Book Show here on KAZI. But she's come into the uh, studio to give us a, uh, a younger person's mm -hmm. version. So, Michaela, how interesting is it talking business with someone who's much, much older than you? How did it start off for you when you first had to have those conversations? And how has it changed as you have matured and become much more experienced with business? Um, well, when I started, I was very nervous. I remember doing workshops in front of Whole Foods markets and organizations, and I would be very nervous before starting because I was like, Mom, Dad, all these people are much older than me. They probably already know it. Um, but what they always told me is no matter how old you are, you don't know everything. There's always something you can, le you can learn. And so um, now when I'm doing meetings and presentations and almost everyone in the audience is older than me, that's something that I have to remember is that I always, you, no matter the age, you have something to teach, you have something to, to bring to the table. And um, that's, I mean, since I've started, that's what changed my mentality, that's what stopped me from being afraid of talking to people that are older than me. Well, I looked and saw that you have, I believe, 20 or 24,000 followers on your Instagram account, right? We actually just hit our goal of 25,000. 25,000. So, so now I have to set a new one. Okay, so I'm going to let you give me some advice. I think I have 200 followers on Instagram. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing you have to do is always plug it. So for me, my Instagram is at Michaela's Bees. It's M-I-K-A-I-L-A-S B-E-E-S. Um, so whenever you're talking to people, whenever you're going on shows like these, plug it just like I did. Um, that's always very important. Um, but I would also say come out with new content. Come out with content that people are interested in instead of doing, you're always going to have to be adapting and keeping on top of trends. Um, I would also say you're not going to just get followers by um, posting. You have to follow, do hashtags, you have to um, interact with other people that are in the same field. So those are just three tips that I've learned and that I do. So talk a little bit more about hashtags because that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs who are new to the world of social media don't know what to hashtag. Mm -hmm. How do you decide which hashtags to use? So I just started a challenge called the Use Your Lemon Challenge, which is where um, everyone is able to take a lemon or an adversity in life, um, add sugar and how they made lemonade. And so uh, for that, I'm using hashtag Use Your Lemon. And so a hashtag is something where all the posts that have said the hashtag, they go into this page. And so whether it's hashtag ATX, whether it's hashtag KZI, you can see all the previous posts that have, uh, that have hashtag, that have used the hashtag. And so what it does is it gives you experience, it gives you, um, what's it called? It gives you publicity. So when people are looking at hashtag KZI, they can see your post, but also tons of other posts that have used the same hashtag. So um, I guess it's a tag, and all the other posts that have used that tag go into this page, and people usually who look at that tag can see your post and others. So what have you uh, learned about the financial side of the business? Uh, the marketing side is usually the more fun side, but yes. keeping books and accounting. Talk a little bit about your experience on the accounting and financial side of the business. So I learned that from my dad. Since I started, he taught me how to make a budget. He taught me about the balance sheet. And I'm still learning today about POs and making sure I'm on top of all the orders and about inventory. Uh, but it, I'm still learning. And as a 14 year old, there's no way I can know it all. And I'm still learning from my parents, people who we've hired on the team. We just hired a new financial, a new sales team, a new ops team and uh, we're working with them to both learn, but also to make sure that they're, they're with the brand and that they can publicize it and make sure that they are um, helping us with our company as well. Oh my, I don't wanna dominate the conversation, so <laughs> I guess I need to give you a little bit more time. Do you have any more questions for Michaela? Um, yeah. How did you feel when your parents told you that they were going to sign you up for a business? I was always really excited about it, and the reason why was because a lot of other kindergartners in my grade were signing up for the business fair as well. And I wanted to do it not only because I saw my friends, but I also wanted to, it was a competition, and I've always had this little competitive edge, there was a prize, and you got to see, I guess, who had the best business idea, 
and it was great for me because before then I had been selling like flowers in front of my house but now I had the opportunity to sell at a fair where there were definitely going to be people that were coming to my booth and that were going to other booths so I was excited about it super excited I remember squeezing women's the night before past my bedtime but uh, I think if you if you are interested in doing the fair definitely there's lemonade day here if you have a lemonade idea there's acting church business fair so for any kids out there don't be afraid don't be nervous to sign up to for these things but be really excited they're great opportunities do you have a lot of conversations uh, with kids or do you are you currently going out and speaking to kids about starting your own business at schools or summer camps have you started doing that yet yes that's what I've been doing uh, since I was about 10 years old last year or actually yeah to the year before last year I went to South Africa and I was able to teach um, girls especially girls if they were girls my age or younger about social entrepreneurship, how to turn your passion into profit. And so I still do that. That's my main focus and the reason why is because kids like me and you, we're the future. And it's important for us to get these lessons early on because when we grow up, we're gonna be way ahead of the curve and uh, we're already gonna be on the next thing. So that's why. So since you're an uh, experienced entrepreneur, you've been working with your mother and father for a number of years, what advice would you give to the parents that are listening to the show of uh, what they can do to help to bring out the passion of their kids that could be help them to become social entrepreneurs, to turn their passions into ideas, into business? I would say get them as high up in as many things as possible. What you have to do first is they have to find their passion, they have to find what they're interested in. And then once they have that thing that they love, then they can go figure out how they can monetize it or make a business. So I guess the first step for me is that my parents are signing me up in different clubs and different activities so I could find out what I loved. I loved gardening. And before that they had signed me up in a gardening camp. So really what what you need to have is the kids need to have experience and they need to say, okay, here's a problem that I saw when I went to this thing and here's how, here's my business to help solve it. So really you just have to be supportive don't force it, um, but what's important is that you're just making sure they have experience to all these, all different aspects and all different fun things, and then they can create a business idea from that. What type of advice would you give to parents or to kids listening 13, 14, 15 years old in terms of preparing themselves financially? What are some of the habits you've learned as an entrepreneur in terms of managing your money that you think other kids who could be entrepreneurs in the future should be thinking about? Uh, one thing my dad always said is he said to give, save, and spend. And that's something that we still do, do to this day. The reason why is the first thing to do is that you give. You give to a nonprofit or an organization that you support. For me, it's the Sustainable Food Center, it's Heifer International, um, different organizations to help save the bees. The second thing, and really the most important thing, is to save. And the reason why is because you need to make sure that you're planning for the future. Whether it's for a car, a company, or the startup that you're hoping to do, you're, you need to save for things that maybe you don't have enough money now, but over time, by saving, you can purchase or get those things. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to spend. It's something that you worked so hard to achieve, so you definitely should have little money uh, to spend on yourself, to have some fun, to to be rewarded for what you did. So it's give, save, and spend, and it's in that order. And that's what I learned. I remember writing deposit checks when I was uh, five or six, and my parents would be like, you have to write, have your handwriting neat, because if you don't, they're gonna take more money out of your bank account, or they're gonna put the wrong amount of money back in. So that was really important, and I still do that. I still say that to this day. Ma, you have any more questions? Um, yes, I actually do. So, um, where do you get your different lemonade flavor ideas from? Like, I know some of the flavors prickly pear. I usually yep. don't see like a lot of lemonades at stores that have prickly pear. Like, there are normally basic flavors like just plain lemonade or strawberry mm -hmm. or lime. That's something that I noticed. And one tip is you have to be unique. And so what I decided is, okay, I'm not gonna have the regular, uh, the regular original lemonade, strawberry, raspberry, blueberry. I wanna have something uh, in flavors that are fun and functional. 
And so that's why each flavor kind of has a different story. I'm from Austin, Texas. As you know, in Austin, Texas, you have a lot of cacti. And a fruit that grows on cacti is prickly pear, so that's how I came up with that flavor. Um, my grandparents, my great, great granny Helen, the one who came up with the recipe for flaxseed lemonade, she lived in South Carolina and she drank a lot of iced tea. So um, that's why I decided to do half an ounce iced tea and lemonade. Mint was from my garden because I'm not sure if any of you are gardeners, but mint is a plant that kind of takes over. And so I decided why didn't I try to put it to use and put some of my lemonade. It tasted really good. And so that was my original flavor. And then ginger was because of my younger brother because he started a lemonade stand as well called Gingerade. And we decided to merge business ventures and have a ginger Mutinous flavor. So what are some of the biggest challenges? If you were just to name a couple of things that was a challenge for you personally as an entrepreneur and you had to overcome that challenge and you were able to move ahead, why don't you share a couple of examples? Uh, well, my biggest challenge was a name change. And the reason why is because after we went on Shark Tank, uh, the company contacted us and they said, you can either pay us a couple million dollars to borrow the name or you can just completely change it. And initially, I was not going to change my name because that was a name that I had come up with when I was four and a half years old. It was my name and it was how I got my success this far. But eventually I started realizing, okay, there's already cosmetics with this name, there's already snacks with this name, and the only way that I'm going to be able to expand is for me to change that name. And I realized, I'm gonna have to change my name eventually, why not take advantage of this opportunity and turn it around? So we got help from Mr. Mark and Team One Agency who wrote Legacy in the Making. Uh, we changed the name, and now we that's me and the bees, but we have completely different branding and we're able to branch out. We have lip balms now that are an extension of the brand. We have t-shirts. And so uh, what I realized is that there's always a way to turn, to turn lemon into lemonade. Um, and even though you may not realize it at first, you, you have to dig deeper and you can always turn lemons into lemonade. So are you giving uh, motivational speeches uh, these days? I am actually. Uh, my next one is, where is it? It's in Atlanta, and I'm gonna be able to speak to a bunch of kids talking about how if, if you wanna be a social entrepreneur, which you definitely should be, here's why you should be a social entrepreneur, and here's why you should make a business and solve a problem. So that's gonna be this weekend. So can I put you on the spot? Sure. Can we get a one minute version of your motivational speech? Sure. Um, I started when I was four and a half years old. That means that there's no specific age and there's no race, there's no gender that you have to be to start a company. And that's why you should do it. Um, when I started, I started in Austin, Texas. I didn't know about beverage industries. I didn't know anything about making a profit, but there's always a way to learn what you know and so that's why I think you should start doing research that's why I think you should turn what you what whatever problem you see in the world today that's why you should figure out a way to solve it and possibly create a business or a service from it um, and there's gonna be problems there's gonna be challenges like my name change that I had but it's important to overcome those and that is Michaela Almer she is the founder and CEO, CEO of me and the bees lemonade and the Healthy Hive Foundation. Share with the audience your website, your and Twitter, Facebook, Instagram again. Yes, yeah, so my social media handles are the same as my Instagram, so that's for Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my website is meandthebees.com. It's M-E-A-N-D-T-H-E-B-E-E-S. And if you wanna learn where you can purchase lemonade, you can go to our Where to Buy page. Uh, we also have the lemonade online and the lip balms and different recipes that you can make with the lemonade in a blog. So uh, if you get a chance, definitely check that out. And any last words, Maya? Um, no. <laughs> Thanks so much for interviewing me. I'm glad of that another kid got to interview me. Yeah, <laughs> well, thank you so much. And Maya Hay, she is the uh, host, the co-host of Teen Choice Book Show, the first Saturday of every month, 2.15 here KZI, part of Below Zero, Michaela Ulmer.
uh, CEO and founder of Me and the Bees Lemonade. Thank you so much for being a guest on Economic Perspectives. Thanks so much for inviting me here, and thank you so much for listening. And thank you for listening to Economic Perspectives. I'm Hopeton Hay. You're listening to KAZI 88.7 FM. Coming up next is Mike with the Blues. Have a great evening.